Let that thing be aborted now. Amen. Lord, show us mercy. Amen. Help us more. Amen. And we vow to give you the glory. Amen. And everyone shout amen. Amen. Be seated briefly. Glory to God. Like I said, we're just going to move now as quickly as we can. Amen. Lift your right hand and shout, I am gateway. I am gateway. My covenant place covenant is at the topmost top. 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 Only good things, Only good things are, permitted are permitted in my life. In my life. If you believe that, say amen. amen. We have been on a series titled, This Thing Works. Somebody shout, This Thing Works. I said to them in the first two services that God doesn't need to prove himself. God has proved himself again and again. Are you with me? And anything that works, that is not working for you, it's either you are not working it, or you are not working it well, or you are not working it enough, or something is working against it. Are you with me? But if that thing works, it must work for you. Amen. I didn't hear your amen. amen. So our challenge as Christians, since we know that the covenant works, we know that the things revealed in the scripture works. Please, today I'm not shouting. Would that be okay? Yes. Let me just talk simply. Uh... It's for us to learn how these things work and work them well and they will work for us. Are you here? The problem with many Christians is that they don't want to learn how the thing works. So they go to church and they're there for seven years and they won't learn anything. Or they stay where nobody is teaching them. And then when it's not working, they say, now this church thing has come. No, sir. Know how it works. Are you here? You see, uh, when you are going to school, and they said you are going to have a mathematics exam, you studied for the exam. Is that true? Talk to me. While you are studying for the exam, you try to do the examples they put in your book to see if you can use the formula and solve the problem. Is that true? After that, you picked up the question paper that is past first question paper of Wayek. And you try to see also if you can answer it. Huh? You tested yourself to see whether you know it. Because, listen, how many of you here has ever been taught a formula before? And then you try to use it to solve a problem and found out, ah, you even thought you understood it, but you, you couldn't use it. Huh? That's what happens when you sit in church. And you actually think you understood what I'm teaching. But you never try to walk that formula and get used to it. And then a challenge came your way. And you tried to apply faith and faith failed you. Because you didn't know that you didn't know how to use the faith formula. You are not hearing me. Since you were born, you know that prayer works. But somehow you think that prayer is kalo kalo. You do pakam. And then it can enter. It may not enter. You are not hearing. Please look up here. Most of you here do prayer like Kalo Kalo. You, are not, you don't know what Kalo Kalo is. The older ones know. Do you know what it means? All these are games you play. Like betting. Huh? You are not with me here. Prayer is like you throw one. And you sit down you wait. I said it didn't enter. That's what people do. But you can be sure of answered prayer as you are sure you are alive. 
Okay, let me give you an illustration. You were here through the five nights of this program. We prayed one prayer, Lord, let there be no rain. There were times rain tried to come. And through the five nights, did you think that that was answer prayer or it was coincidence? So that means you can actually ask God for something and watch that no matter the attempt of the devil, that thing can happen. Please talk to me. They can actually pray and people can have their answer. A woman was giving a testimony in the last service. Their baby from six months started convulsing. And convulsed almost every day until three years. Consistent. In school, they would just call her, come and pick your child. Start small tata in school. And then he said, the husband said, let's go and see papa. They carried the baby. After he became three years, walked up to the office. I just laid hands on him and said, it will not happen again. And they left. And she was here in the second service. He said, this baby is exactly, this is exactly two years from that prayer. He said, not just that that conversion has not happened in two years. He said, in two years, he has not been sick. That means that God actually answers prayer. Am I wasting your time? So the question is this. Why is it not working for you? So the first Sunday, we taught you on the laws of dynamic faith. So if you are one of those that have been trying to apply faith and faith has not been working, go pick up that CD. Listening to it again and again and again until you can say, I see. That's how destinies change. Next Sunday we start again, fire, 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 fire. But today, hear me. Because life is bigger than mathematics exam. If you have my voice, say yes. But more than 80% of those in church, we never do that. Take the first service, second service, third service, sit down, take your notes, ask yourself, where am I missing it? Where am I not missing it? Are you with me? I told you, I, one of our members here forced me to stop playing golf. So I followed them. I thought it's just to take stick, hit something. I didn't know there's a lot of technicalities. So I go there, I hit it, and I look like a foolish man. You are not hearing me. So what do I do? I keep trying to improve. Then it looks like I was getting, but my potting was not working at all. You see a hole there, you hit the thing, it's going there. You're asking yourself, am I crazy or, or this uh, thing I'm holding is working against me? Why is their own working for them and my own is working against me? And a few weeks ago, I called one professional. And I said, can you take me out? Show me this. Just watch everything I'm doing. And tell me where I am stupid. And where I'm getting it right. And I paid him and he took me. Particularly that potting. He just said to me, after I finished one, he just smiled. I said, look at this. Look at this. He said, that's how I do it. I said, what? I never even thought about it. So I tried it the first one. It was good. Try the second one. It was good. Try the third one. It was good. Ten times. It was good. Since that day, anybody playing with me, those who used to play with me, they came in there and they saw. What did happen? I won't tell you. Because I paid to be taught. If you are going to be taught. <laughs> but it took one small teaching to change foolishness to wisdom. There is nothing on earth that is easy. I've been believing God. I can't even 
believe in 1,000 naira to talk of 1 million. You are believing is defective. We believe and it works. Look at the steps of my life from one room, boys quarter, until here. From a church where we sat on block, block, nine inch block. Preaching every Sunday with FM mic and radio on Wednesday. Borrowing equipment every week to preach. And look at how far. This faith thing works. Why is it not working for you? The next week we looked at the laws of effectual prayer. You pray, 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 pray after some time. Do you know why people find it difficult to pray? Their prayers, nobody, they answer them. If you pray and you see answer prayer, the motivation to pray more will be there. When you finish, ay, 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 and the next day your life is ay, 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 ay. When they say pray again, you say the one I prayed before. Where it? That's why we're talking about the laws of effectual prayer. That you've been going to church since we are born doesn't mean you know it. Assumption leads to frustration. Is anybody hearing? The third week we did the laws of profitable sacrifice. You went to that church, you dropped a seed. You went to the other place, you dropped a seed. None of your seed has ever produced a harvest before. So now you say seed sowing is scam. No, your own is not working. You don't know what to do after you drop the seed. Nobody taught you. They just said collect this. And that's why many of you have been in churches where nobody teaches you anything. You just keep running around hoping that one day your effort will work. Man of God, lay hands. Lay hands. Lay hands. So, boy, sit down and let me teach you. There's no teaching. Just lay hands. I will pay for the hand. I will minister to you in the power of the Holy Ghost, but I will also teach you. So that if I'm not available, you can still get the answer. Are you with me? Because you didn't get born again to be the customer of a pastor. You got born again to be a child of God. Come on, talk to me. That's what I'm teaching. And last week we looked at the laws of hastened resort. How do you hasten a resort? I just finished this program now. 31 days of prayer and fasting is gone. Okay. A year to get married. How do I make this happen immediately? I listen to one message. To then one service walked away and hope again. By this time next day again, you are still hoping. Because assumption is killing you. Wisdom is too difficult for a foolish person. And if you don't pay attention, you will pay somebody. You have a choice. You didn't hear me. There are two pens in life. Two what? Everybody must go through pain. One of these two. You either have the pen of discipline or the pen of regret. If you don't suffer the pain of discipline, you will suffer the pain of regret. Get into the world. Touch your neighbor and say, no, it all is you he's talking to. Uh, don't you know it all? A neighbor is the one I'm talking to. Okay, today we've been talking about the law of abiding victory. Somebody say victory. Let me hear a shout out victory. What laws do you apply to make sure that your victory is abiding? How many of you know that you are already victorious in Christ? Huh? You know in Romans chapter 8, God didn't call us conquerors. He called us more than conquerors. More than conqueror is easy to understand. Have you watched all of these people that do boxing before? Huh? In those days, Tyson or Holyfield or Tyson Fury or any of these ones now that are boxing around. And then the man enters a heavyweight championship ring. And he's taking blows and giving blows. Before the fight is over, his mouth has adjusted. <laughs> his eye is bleeding. Everything is out of all shape. In fact, even his brain has turned. He's there all the rounds. There was no knockout. Pain all over. He finished. And they say he's the champion. 
They gave him a check. $12 million. And this huge man goes back home. And finds his small wife. And hands over the check. The man is a conqueror. The wife is more than conqueror. No, no. I, 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 I don't think you got it. Is anybody getting what I'm talking about? Why does the Bible call us more than conquerors? Jesus went to Calvary. He fought the devil. He broke principalities and powers. And then he came up and said, all power is given to me. And I give it to you. <laughs> Lift up your hand. Life will never defeat you again. <laughs> so, heaven is surprised when a Christian loses. You can lose. The question is this. No, no, no. Are you still with me? Uh, are you here? What are the laws you have to obey? Because after every major spiritual oppression like the one we just done, there are two kinds of faith victories you must establish. Are you with me? The first one is a victory of persistence. Some may say victory of persistence. Have your mouth gone home? Can I hear you now? Victory, victory. or persistence? Talk loud. Victory, victory. or persistence? Victory. Listen, brothers and sisters. You see, in Hebrews chapter 10, 35 to 38. Hebrews 10, 35 to 38. It says, Cast not away therefore your confidence, which had great recompense of reward. For you have need of patience. That after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. For yet a little while. And he that shall come, will come. And will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Somebody shout, I will not draw back. <laughs> Look up here. Do you notice that many times after a program, you have one or two people testify. And the devil tells you, well, uh, that's the people that got it. No. Even if you have not seen your answer, you have got it. I didn't hear your amen. amen. It may not physically manifest it, but it's there. That a woman is not carrying baby in the hand doesn't mean she's not pregnant. Am I talking to somebody here? Today? Don't abort your baby before it is born. And people who don't persist until the manifestation abort their testimony by their attitude, by their words. Are you with me? Oh, 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 oh. Are you with me? Don't abort it. Keep believing. Keep trusting. Keep moving. Keep fighting. Psalms 23 verse 17 says, Surely there is an end. And your expectation shall not be cut off. If you had my voice say amen. amen. Lift up your right hand. What you are believing for, may you see it. Amen. Persist. Somebody say persist. So where we read, he said, Cast not away your confidence, which has great reward. He said, you have need of patience that after you have done the will of God, can I ask you, the fasting, the prayer, the giving, was it the will of God? Did you do the will of God? Yes, huh? Yes, he said, then calm down. Calm down. I was uh, talking, somebody met me after service, Nice. I'm the one that sent you the test we are talking about. I said, sure. Somebody yesterday sent me a test. He said, Pastor, I'm losing it. And all of that. And wrote a few things. So I saw it and I reached out to the person. We are you in the vigils of destiny? Yes. You were there. You were there through the night? Yes. Have you given God one day to walk? How does a person spend all this time praying and didn't believe one thing? My God. Am I talking to somebody here too? Are you here? 
Maybe you are here now and your landlord is supposed to come to you in the next two weeks asking for rent. And all through the 31 days you have been praying, Lord, give me breakthrough. And until now, no money has come. And one demon sits on your shoulder and they ask you, what will you do? What will you do? It's two weeks old. What will you do? What I'm saying, does it happen? And then you are, you are chatting with the devil. He says, it's true, it's true. He says, I don't know. All of these people that borrow money online, should I apply? And he says, apply. And you, you are concerned. Have you waited? Even until the very last day, the answer can come. You have need of patience. Are you still with me? You are just here now. We finish ministering to you. You have not gotten your answer. Physically manifested. The next week, they told you, ah, there's one church that's going to wash your face. He said, hey, let's go. Calm down. The wedding will happen. The baby will be born. Can you lift your hand? And let me hear a shout like thunder. Oh Lord, I believe you. The second victory is the victory. I told the first one is the victory of what? Persistence. The second one is victory of permanence. Somebody say permanence. permanence. Please look up here. Matthew chapter 12 verse 43. Jesus was giving a, a teaching. And he said, when an unclean spirit is gone out of a person, that unclean spirit walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none. Hi, are you here? Verse 46. Then verse 44, please. Then he said, I will return into my house from whence I came. And when he is come, he findeth it empty. Shout empty. They swept. Let me I say swept. Let me I say perfumed. So this evil spirit left somebody. And then he didn't just walk away. He said, after some time, make I go check that house again. So he comes around. Find a place that is what? Empty. Swept. Perfumed. Excuse me. What do you expect that the Bible said found a place dirty? He didn't say found dirty. He said found swept. Well perfumed. But empty so he says next verse then he said i will return are you with me verse 25 then go with him and take it with him how many seven other three more wicked than seven and they enter in and where they are in and the last state of the man is worse than the first hello third service are you okay he said, why am I spending time on this and just talking casually? Because there are many of us that have been in church for many years. And it's not working. And we're getting very frustrated. They did a deliverance for you last year. And two years ago. Should you still again this year be a customer of deliverance? If they cure you in hospital, do you live in hospital? When I say get out, the devil should leave you and never return. But what you forgot is this. That unclean spirits move around. And after some time, they say, I will try. I will check. I will check. I will check. And they say emptiness and they come in. Hello? Satan is a master in counter attacks. He will come. But why is he succeeding? You didn't win the battle. You didn't stand. Look up here, you know. Jewish people from their Talmud with their theologians tell us that 40 is the number of transition. Somebody say transition. Can I say transition? Have you heard them say, oh, Moses was on the mountain for 40 days. Jesus went to fast for 40 days. Are you here? You know what they believe? 
uh, they tell you that uh, if a spirit leaves somebody, that spirit hangs around for 40 days looking for an accommodation. If it doesn't find, within the 40 days it tries to return. But after that, you'll find a place and just move on. You're not hearing. So, that's why they believe that anything you can stop doing for 40 days, you can stop it for a lifetime. Anything you can win for 40 days, you can win it for life. But you know, this young girl comes to church. She's struggling with the spirit of rejection and she can't get married. And it's been a recurring decimal in her life. And I take authority. Come out, you spirit of rejection. You see her rotating on the ground. She sees something walk out of her. That thing that left hangs around for a few days and comes to put in to see if the place is empty. And then finds it empty, comes in, and it gets worse. But within those 40 days, where she should have continued in prayer, continue worshipping, continue living pure. She has got She has stopped serving God. Her prayer life has died. The same thing for the businessman that I took authority. I said, come out, you spirit of poverty. And he shouted, amen. And he left. And you thought he was going to stay until that thing that helped him. Two weeks later, he's back to where he used to be. The moment a program ends, Satan produces every way in the mess. Find out that the kind of temptation you have never seen in your life in a few days after a program. The kind of quarrel that you haven't seen in your marriage will happen immediately after. You just notice that pressure comes. All kinds of things come. All of that is happening to take you back to where you used to be happens, the thing that left returns without a and it's worse than before. But because you didn't, because you know, didn't that, know that, what has explained the last five years, years of your life? Up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. Will it be okay, okay if, if at least for, for the next, next 40, 40 days, days we allow, allow that strange train, train, train to find, to find the place? place. And just stay, just stay in, prayer. in prayer. Stay in stay worship. worship. Stay in service. Stay, stay in, stay in sacrifice. Sacri just, 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 just be, be, be the person that wants you to. Wants you to. Everywhere, Everywhere is quiet. Are you guys Are you okay? Guys okay? <laughs> but, but because... <laughs> because what is holding you is too strong. And you are not ready to let it go. As you finish hearing me now, going to walk away now. It's another trouble. You listen for one hour. You say, you think I'm foolish. Think I am foolish. Not only you get verse. You come. You say to that. You give it to him. When you finish, every grace is Am I wasting time with somebody? Same thing with the young man. They say, oh, I'm believing God. I'm believing God. I prayed. I saw the seed. There is the victory of permanence. Settle this nonsense once and for wrong. Bow in the house of God. Stay in prayer. Don't back off until that devil doesn't find a space to return. Am I wasting my time with you? But for five years, you have run the same circle. Believe me, whether you know it or not, within the one week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks of any major program, you got a victory. All manner of temptations will show up. If you check from January, you saw that. You check any month, it's a normal thing. You just be going. Somebody, there are people that finished night vigil on Friday and the keke man took their answer. They didn't know what was happening. They thought it was normal life because when you don't have spiritual eye, you don't know when battle is going on. I think I should, I should stop. They're not here. don't know when battle is going on. You see, listen. 
How many of you noticed that in the Bible, there was a time that they kidnapped, they took the wife of David and, ah? Huh? Are you with me? Amalekites came to Ziklag, burnt him with fire, collected his wife and children. You remember? And God said, pursue, overtake, and recover. You remember? Do you know that that night of that battle was the same night that Saul died? The first wife began. There's always something. Did I waste my time coming here too? Satan is a master encounter at times. But a lot of people are not ready for victory. I want you to lift your right hand. On the authority of the one I represent, Jesus who died and rose again, whatever curse is upon your life is broken. Amen. Whatever wants to take your destiny is cursed. I decree over you, you will never see shame. Never go down. Never lose a life. In the name of Jesus Christ, your victory is commanded. It's a new season. Come on, I say it's a new season. Don't let this be the month after all this strategic praying. The one quarrel, one stupid thing will steal your destiny. What are the laws of abiding victory? First service, we talk to them on the law of joy. I say to them, if you don't listen to that message, that's your problem. Every other message is built on that foundation. So, just like I told you, get all the CDs. Take this month of August and use it to go through all of this. Learn them. Get to know them. Let them become part of your normal life practice. And things just become easy. Are you here? Huh? You see, what you don't know is bigger than you. No, you are not hearing me. You can carry anointing and not, and not be able to release it. You will go forward. Amen. Second service will talk to them on the law of truth. And this service, I'll talk to you briefly on the law of vigilance. These are the three laws of abiding victory. Law of joy, law of truth, law of vigilance. Are you here? Huh? You see, we don't care about the devil, but we are never careless about the devil. We don't care about him, but we're never careless of him. First Peter 5, verse 8. He said, Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Only a fool underestimates the wickedness of the wicked. Look at verse 9. Verse 9. Be, verse 9. Whom resist steadfast in the faith. Knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Whatever you are going through, others are going through. Resist him steadfast. Be vigilant. Don't let the enemy come in. You will win. Yeah. Let me give you a few things to think about. Number one is this. That darkness always shadows light. And we take advantage of dim areas. Darkness always shadows light. It will take advantage of any dim area. Have you noticed that no matter how bright light is, if there's any area where there is dimness or there is something, there will be shadows in that area. Huh? Because that's how darkness behaves. That's how darkness behaves. Don't assume that darkness ran away. Darkness is always a shadow around light. Look at Isaiah 61 and 2. It says, Arise, shine, for the light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Ah? 
Are you there? Now the next verse we look like is uh, contrary to the first one. It says, For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. So you are carrying light, but darkness is all around you. Don't let the darkness get access. Do you get me? You are carrying glory, but shame is around you. Don't let the shame get access. Receive grace. Luke eleven thirty six. Luke eleven thirty six. If you can find it very quickly, he said, "If thy whole body therefore be full of light, having no part dark, don't let darkness be there. Darkness will always be there, shadowing the light. But don't get low again ascendancy. Be vigilant. Be careful. Notice what the devil is working on." And don't allow him to take advantage of you. Most spiritual battles are not witchcraft battles of something is biting you. Most spiritual battles are battles of behaviors. Is anybody hearing me here? They are battles of behaviors. And that's why people lose it. Secondly, the devil does not get ascendancy by power. He gets ascendancy by tricks. The weakest Christian is higher than the biggest witch. Look up here. If you can see me, shout yes. yes. Is that man sleeping or meditating? Are you sleeping or meditating? Please look up here. If you have my voice, say yes. yes. If I can be preaching like this, you are sleeping, you need deliverance. Can you look up me? Satan does not get ascendancy by power. He gets ascendancy by tricks. Even if you are the weakest, sinniest Christian, you are bigger than the biggest witch. Where you are and where he is are not the same. No, you are not. Is anybody hearing me here today? You need to understand that. Look at me now. But Satan uses wiles. Somebody say wiles. Second Corinthians 2 verse 11. He said, list. Satan should gain an advantage of us. For we are not ignorant of what? He's not of his power, but of his devices. Satan so will come around you. Yeah, 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 yeah. And not, if you are not careful, you get caught up. Please look up here now. Okay, it's like you're tired of me. If you're tired of me, tell me it's like I'm tired of you too. I'll be one one. <laughs> are you hearing me? Okay, so look up here. He's uh, uh, doing deliverance for you. We bound all the things in your father's house. And then got back home this night. And then uh, you were sleeping in the dream. In the dream and uh, somebody came and gave you food to eat. And you started eating like you used to eat. You finished eating. You woke up in the morning. You said, Kai, I thought I was delivered. Hey, this thing has come again. Satan said, that's a good customer. The trick has worked. It's called false evidence appearing real. That's the difference between mature and immature. No, you're not hearing me. You see, in everything, it's like an immature driver and a mature driver when there's an emergency. An immature driver may even remove hand from the steering. Say, hey! Please, what I'm saying is that true? It's just an emergency. A mature driver will hold the steering and bring it down. You saw when the plane almost crashed on Houston River in the U.S. And one captain, forgot what his name now, is there uh, Salem Berger or whatever, took the plane from the sky that was crashing, had a bad heat on the sky, the engine packed up. And landed the plane on the Houston River. 
and brought out every passenger. They were asking, how did they do it? But you see, when they were interviewing him on CNN, that guy has been a fighter pilot before. When he left being a fighter pilot, he became a trainer for trainers of people that are uh, uh, for pilots. You're not hearing me. He was a fighter pilot in the war in uh, Afghanistan and the rest of them. Came back and became a trainer for pilots. Then after that, began to fly commercial airlines. So, there is no kind of emergency he has not visualized before. So the moment that happened, his training took over. So the calmness made sure there was no crash. But there are few pilots on this earth that the engine will fail like that. And they have enough presence of mind to be able to bring it down without a loss of life. Maturity and immaturity are not the same met. Am I talking to somebody here today? So this thing you saw it, you woke up in the body, look at the devil and say, excuse me, Satan. You're the craze. How dare you give me food with only one meat? <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah, devil. He said, the one I go so far now is poor demon too. They send demon to me in a poor one. You should have put 17 meat. Nonsense. You yearize him. You make him look stupid. The next night, the next night, after that, he will just keep quiet. Why? You are not a good customer. They didn't hear me. We prayed for you. You felt something move out of your body. And then you felt that you are healed. And then three days later, you felt pain on that part of your body. He said, I thought I was here though. I thought I was here. I didn't know this thing is still here. Satan said, that's why I like her. He said, add two more for her. But then you felt that thing. And you looked at it. You hit that place. And you said, whatever the Lord do it, it shall be permanent. You have no right to return here. Get back to where you came from. The authority with which you speak. One said, ah, I thought I was healed. One said, I am healed and you are not returning. Maybe I'm in the wrong house. We rebuke this favor. You go to the market. You go to the business place. And the man said, I don't want to see you. And you left. He said, ah, they said, I, say, I need to go for deliverance. Oh, no, you stand there, you say, Father, thank you. I have access anywhere I want to go. Favor is upon my face. They can't say no to me. Lord, I see, I see that man calling me back. And you hang around a little bit, praying the Holy Ghost. Remove your shoe or whatever, walk around a few parts of the compound and then go back home. Two days later, you were in the house, the phone rings. The man said, can I see you? Where have you been? He said, I was there yesterday. He said, they didn't tell me. He said, but I spoke to you. He said, I don't remember. No, you are not hearing me. I'm telling you practical things. A sister in this church was fired from work and had me preaching. And the next day she went back to the office where they fired her. As I entered the place, nobody asked me, what are you doing here? So I went back to my former office and sat down. <laughs> sat down there for one month and they paid her salary. You didn't hear me. You say that's not a lie. She can, I can bring her to you. I can ask her next Sunday to testify your, your face. That's how she regained her job. Nobody ever asked her how, who employed you back. I don't know. But she just went back. Entered and allowed her to enter. Because, of course, she's been a worker there. So nobody asked her question. I believe that somebody here hearing me now whatever wants to bring you down is going down for you stop being a good customer if you have my voice I hear you sir 
Can I hear loud? I hear you, sir. Another sister, the husband packed her and go and go sent her home. And she returned to the house by evening. You didn't hear me. The man came back, got tired. So what are you still doing here? He said, <laughs> he said we're all here together. <laughs> the third thing I want to know is this. It is possible to open an evil door by the misuse of your tongue. Be vigilant about your tongue. Somebody say my tongue. Be vigilant about your tongue. Don't talk nonsense. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. And with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Proverbs 18 verse 20. Put it up. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. And with the increase of his lips, shall, whatever you are speaking will satisfy your belly, whether good or bad. Look at the next verse, verse 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And whichever one you like, whether you love death or you love life, whichever one you speak, that's the fruit you will eat. So as we live here right now, and are talking Nigeria, you add your own Nigeria. You talk about how nothing is working. How we don't know whether we will survive or not. How the economy is so bad now. They say no, no, nobody can even travel again for business. Dollar is so high. Brothers and sisters, if dollar becomes one naira to one, one million naira to one dollar, your business will still go forward. They didn't say amen. amen. We don't understand what is happening in Nigeria. People are just dying anyhow. People are just being kidnapped anyhow. You won't be kidnapped. Amen. Okay, since you want to be kidnapped, let me leave you. Can I talk to you? You won't be kidnapped. Amen. Those of you over here, do you want it? Since these people don't want it, let's forget it. You won't be kidnapped. Whatever is going, you won't be kidnapped. Amen. You won't suffer loss of any kind. Amen. Psalm 34 verse 12. What man is he that desired life and loveth many days that he may see good? Does that man look like you? Look at the screen. Look at it. What man is he that desired life? Are you that man that likes life? Do you want many days? Do you want to see good in life? Seriously? Look at the next statement. Keep thy tongue from what? And thy lips from speaking what? That's simple. He said this is the condition. If you confess negative, you must go down. Lift your hand and say, I won't go down. I'm giving you another chance. Lift your hand and shout, I won't go down. The fourth thing I want to say to you is this. We're talking about the law of vigilance. Consistent spiritual sensitivity and sanitation will arrest crisis before it intensifies. If you are consistent in sensitivity, and you do spiritual sanitation regularly before crisis multiplies. You have arrested it. Are you here? Is your service lasting too long? I should finish this. Because I don't know when last next I will have this long time to teach. If you are tired of me, I'm okay. I'm tired of you too. Can I finish this? Please look up here where you are. If you keep sanitizing your life, I told you here in this church, hello, those who are joining us newly, no matter your plan, no matter what you do, could you sign up with me that at least once a week, you will find one day in the night and then get up and roar like a lion. 
and attack every altar, every covenant, every coven, every mystery against you, against your family. Can you at least find one day of night prayer for one, two hours and do intense spiritual work? Am I talking to somebody? Just once a week. If you continue like that, bondage will not grow in your life. Before anything intensifies, you have cut it off. But you sleep, 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 sleep. You won't fast one week, one month. The only time you fast is when we say, oh, we're having program. And then you fast from morning till 11.15. Are they hearing me here? By 11.15, your stomach is saying, obey me now, obey me now, obey me now. As you are passing like this, you will hear the smell of food. And you... <laughs> like a zombie. Yeah. Okay, I think I've tried for today. If you got something, say I got it. Be spiritually sensitive. Spiritual things. Number four, demonic seeds do not thrive in an atmosphere. Do not thrive in an atmosphere of faith and joy. Any seed Satan is sowing will not thrive in an atmosphere of faith and joy. Don't allow joylessness to be in your life. Why men slept and enemy went and planted tars? Don't sleep on yourself. If you have me, say yes. And I'm going to read Psalm 74 verse 20. He said, have respect unto the covenant. For the dark places of the earth are full of the habitations of cruelty. Can you lift your hand? And say, so I will not be the victim of any evil. Can your amen be loud? There are dark places of the earth and are full of evil habitations. But how you subdue them is by covenant. Somebody say covenant. covenant. Every time you keep invoking the covenant and stay under spiritual covering. There are some battles that are coming your way and the man that is over you is the person God who used to stop it. No, you are not hearing. Stay under spiritual covering and trust the Lord for your defense. Stand to your feet. Did he enter? Did he enter? This was an intentional teaching. Lift your hand higher than your head. And just two prayers, and I want you to roar like thunder is in your voice. Shout it like fire. Oh God. Oh God. Whatever mystery, Whatever mystery is working hard, is working hard to, bring me down. to bring me down. Down. Oh, oh boy, your mother prayed that mystery. What did to bring me down? Down. If you are sitting down, stand and pray. 